and William Albrecht. Welcome back to Hands On Apologetics. Gary, thrilled to be here, particularly thrilled to be here on this day that is a very important day uh, leading up to wonderful, wonderful feast days of the church, uh, particularly All Saints Day, which is tomorrow, and then we have All Souls Day. Beautiful feast days, beautiful days in which we celebrate and honor those that have passed on. Just uh, very important, and, and particularly love doing this show every year because I love Halloween, but I also realize that there is a lot of misinformation out there in terms of, well, what do we mean by Halloween? Can we celebrate it? Can we dress up? And, um, and really, uh, uh, the fact that a lot of people tend to not understand what Halloween is, tend to think it is a pagan festival, and thus altogether avoid it, or those people that just really don't care, that think they can, that they should glorify the diabolical. I think we're going to set the record straight today. It'll be a lot of fun. And, and of course, All Souls Day, you know, right after All Saints yeah. Day. So it, it's it's actually a fitting segue into today's topic as well. Very, very fitting, Gary, you bring that up. Um, indeed, well, let's, let's define, what do we mean by Halloween before anything I think the one thing that does tend to get forgotten is that from the very beginning, and biblically noted in the Bible, we realize that feast days have been celebrated. Now, the important thing is you find it early on. You find it in Leviticus 23, where we read that the Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to the people of Israel and say to them, these are the appointed festivals of the Lord that you shall proclaim as holy convocations my appointed festivals. Now, the important thing is, is that carries on over into the New Testament, the Gospel of St. Matthew 26, the idea of feast days and festivals to the Lord carries over. But they were saying, not during the festival, lest a riot occur among the people. The very same is found in the parallel in the Gospel of St. Mark in chapter 14. So the idea is festivals, feast days, have been present in the church from the very beginning. When we realize that, then we then move on to what is Halloween? Well, really, Halloween is All Hallows evening, the evening before, the night before we celebrate All Saints Day. Now, what do we do in All Saints? We honor, commemorate those that have gone to heaven. Well, they are saints. And we think of them and we remember them. And more importantly, Gary, they're in heaven. They're in glory. We ask for them to intercede for us. And I think that's very important. Now, the biblical basis for that is very clear. The biblical basis, basis of praying for the dead is incredibly clear in the book of Maccabees, chapter 2 in particular, in multiple areas. But if people want to ask, where is the biblical basis for those that are in heaven and in glory praying or interceding for us, you find it in Revelation 5, where they are in. The, you, you have an image of saints in heaven, they're glorified, they're presented as acting in a priestly role, and they're receiving prayers of the saints on earth, from earth. The prayers are going up, they're arriving, and they're presenting those prayers to the Lord, to the Lamb, in golden bowls of incense. So you have intercession of saints right there present. So it's right there. The other incredible biblical basis for this, Gary, would be uh, the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, where we are told, I believe it is 11, or was it 11 or 1, where it says, we're surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Uh, and I think it is... Yeah, 12-1. Uh, 12 one. Gary, your, your memory is incredible. Uh, incredible. So yeah, that is an incredible passage. So it's talking about those that have passed on, and, and indeed it mentions great patriarchs of, of the Old Testament. They surround us, great figures of the Old Testament. So... We believe that we are that we can call upon those great saints and ask for them to intercede for us. Indeed, if we are told in the Bible that the prayer of a righteous man avails much, and we're told in 1 Timothy and many other areas to ask for intercession, well, I, I'd be honest with you, Gary, I, I would rather have a saint like Holy Mary or various other saints be my prayer warrior than perhaps somebody here on earth. Not that it is not... Um, good. We're told we're the body of Christ, and it is valuable to have your brothers praying for you as well. But perhaps even more valuable is those saints that are in glory in heaven praying for us, because the prayer, we know the prayers of Holy Mary are incredibly valuable, 
our Immaculate Mother Mary. So that all of that is very clear biblical basis when we talk about All Saints Day, which really Halloween is the prelude, if you will, to All Saints Day and then All Souls Day, two very important feast days of the church. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And it's also one of those things that I think a lot of Catholics, I know as a cradle Catholic, of course, we, we're familiar with the feast and the general understanding of it, but we really don't understand the, the biblical and patristic roots of those feasts. Yeah, and I think if we, when we begin to dig down, Gary, and we begin to look and realize, okay, well, what what is the basis for this? And I think the one thing that'll be important to really dispel today is the idea that Halloween is pagan in origin. And, and even had it been pagan, I want to be clear, even if it was pagan originally and the church tried to or succeeded in Christianizing that day and getting away with the evil and the, the demonic, we can give a hearty amen to that. But the problem really is, Gary, that originally – like so many other things, it originates this in the Catholic faith. And it was only later that pagans or those that were attempting to subvert the Catholic faith uh, concocted their own um, um, diabolical kind of uh, invention to really just try to subvert what the Catholics were already celebrating. So I think that when we lay that groundwork down, and we will in a bit, As we begin to look at incredibly early dates um, that indicate that indeed this is um, this well predates any kind of pagan festival and the idea of praying for the dead, asking for saints to intercede for us and praying for the dead, those that are undergoing postmortem suffering, which we we recognize in particular All Souls Day for is a very clearly biblical basis and found in the early church as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And like you said, you know, it's it's also a lightning rod between Catholics mm-hmm. and Protestants in many different ways. Yeah. Uh, so so it's, it gives us Catholics an opportunity to share Scripture with Protestants. You know, we're, we're in an enviable position. Yeah, and, and the other thing that I pointed out, Gary, the, the, other, the other time we did the show when we were talking about purgatory, the one thing that uh, really did come out to me even more so when I was preparing for my debate again on purgatory, this is why I love our Catholic faith. You can read the Bible over and over and over, and maybe many times you pick up a new incredible nugget of information. And the one thing that I kind of, I, I, I suppose, took for granted and never really dug in and realized was in 2 Maccabees 12, when when the Judas Maccabeus and his army, uh, they approached the men that have fallen and have died. And they begin to pray for them. They offer up supplication and they begin to pray. We look at verse 44, 42 where it says, they turned to supplication, praying that the sin that had been committed might be wholly blotted out. Now, we read of prayer over and over. Verse 44 tells you, if he would not have expected those who had fallen would rise again, it would have been superfluous and foolish to pray for the dead. And therefore we read that, It was a holy and pious thought. The idea of praying for the dead as we do uh, during this particular season was very prevalent already. It was already well ingrained into the life of the ancient Jewish faith because you didn't have Judas Maccabeus men turn to him and say, hey, wait, wait, what are you talking about? We've never done this before. What are we about to do? This is a novelty known. It was very well entrenched in the ancient Judaic faith already by that point because they knew what they were doing and those people that were with him, the rest of his men, they knew they were well acquainted with praying for the dead. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so this isn't coming up with some sort of newfangled idea. No. Uh, They're tapping into a a custom that was already well known. And so, you know, there wasn't any debate, you know, as to – People didn't pull out their pocket to knox and, you know, start debating whether or not it's scriptural. Uh, that was the belief of the time. No doubt. And, and the idea of um, of the incredible intercession that we find, we find um, Onias in 2 Maccabees 15. Uh, we would read of this is God's prophet who loves the Jewish people and offers many prayers for us 
and for Jerusalem, the holy city. So two Maccabees is a really important book because not only do we have there uh, clear imagery of the dead praying for us, interceding for us, but we also have very clear biblical basis to pray for those that are, as 2 Maccabees 12 says, in need of prayer. Why are they in need of prayer? That So that they may be loosed or delivered from their sin. That is very interesting, Gary, because 2 Maccabees 12 clearly implies that the dead are in need of prayer. Why are they in need of prayer? In order that they may be delivered from their sin. And that is exactly why we pray for the dead uh, during this particular time of year. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, that's a perfect place to hit pause. We are chatting with William Albrecht, talking about Halloween. It's uh, biblical and Catholic roots. More to come right after this.